I will call the uh, <clears throat> January 12th, 2022 meeting of the town board to order. Let's stand for the pledge of allegiance. The first order of business is to appoint a uh, town board chair for 2022. Do either of you have motions? Want to do it again? Huh? Want to do it again? Do what again? Be the chair. Oh, well, I, yeah, I wouldn't mind. I'll, 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 I'll second that. Motion's been made and seconded for me to be the chair for 2022. All in favor? Aye. Appointments of committees and commissions for 2022. Now this, this should be your name. Oh, okay. All right. So Cheryl's going to change it. Okay. okay. Planning commission, Ryan <coughs> Sorge, Paul Diffenbach, and um, Nelson. Sorry. Caleb White and Eduard, Eduardo Valencia. <clears throat> These are the years following his years appointed and then who appointed them. But we'll put uh, Dick's name where Ray Kaiser is. They will be your appointments. Town Hall Committee. Um, <clears throat> and none of this changed. Cliff is still on that. Okay. Paul Schoenacher, co-chair, Cliff Roldal, co-chair, Malaya Leek, Edward Valencia, Eduardo Valencia, Pam Glubka, and Dick Adams. Communication Committee, Paul Schoenacher, Shira McCauley, Pam Glubka, and Eduardo Valencia. South Washington County Telecommunications Commission, Paul Deffenbach, Director Dan Oman, elected official, Jerry Tauby, alternate. Cemetery Committee is Patty Bessler, and by the way, I would like to thank Patty for being on the uh, Planning Commission for, for several years. Uh, Cemetery Committee, Patty Besser, Al Shetka, Dick Adams. Um, town board maintenance is that just that's who's cutting the grass. That's what that means, I'm assuming. Rogue committee, Al Shetka, Willie Peterson, and did we pick somebody on the town board or is it all of us? I think it's all Looks of like us. Looks like all of us. Okay, yeah. weed inspector is Tom Bell. <clears throat> Tom here. I'd like to thank him for all of his years of service. <clears throat> and then it goes on to um, so these are all the associates. U.S. Bank, Pioneer Press, Bolton Board, Dave Snyder, Johnson Turner, Willie Peterson, Road Boss, St. Paul Park Police Department, Dick Adams, Halloween Party Coordinator, Tom Clerk, Communications Committee, Cottage Grove Building Division, Building Inspections, Snow and Ice Removal is John Bulow. <clears throat> Any questions on that? Uh, approval of the minutes from the December 8th, 2021. We'll need a uh, <clears throat> motion. I'll make a motion. We approve the minutes from December 8th of 2021. I'll second, second. Okay. I'll second the motion. Motion's been made. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. 
All right. Treasurer's report. I'll review the December 2021 financial statement. This is actually the most exciting financial statement of the year because we get to see how we did. So our beginning balance of checking was 42,243. We had expenses of $7,069 and revenue of 44,490 for an ending balance of 79,665. I'd prefer that to be about 10,000 higher. We're going to get a we'll be a little tight in June depending on the um, uh, gravel tax. Um, our our UBS ac accounts uh, increased their total $503,019. Expenses in December uh, went down by 4,800, mostly because of um, uh, a patching expense. And then December revenue, it looks like it went way up. The levy disbursement just moved from November to December. That's all that happened there. Uh, most interesting at the bottom are the fund balances. So in general purpose, we, we spent 61,000 versus a budget of 49. So that was overspent slightly. Public safety was overspent slightly. And road and bridge, we basically spent what was budgeted. Uh, so for the year, we ran a surplus of 14,000. But keep in mind that we um, withdrew 30,000 in, in our UBS account. So technically, we essentially ran a deficit of about, um, call it 16,000 for the year, which is reasonable. So the surpluses on the bottom right are correct and final. That unallocated 27,000 is from um, the revenue bucket that was, uh, we, we brought in more than we budgeted for. So that's sitting in unallocated and we can put it in any fund that we want to. Do you want to do that today? It's it's not necessary. Okay. I, you know, we may decide to put it in Road and Bridge, I would imagine. Uh, so we don't need to. The only other news outside of the financial statement, I'll, I'll be filing our taxes uh, next week. Uh, so your W-2s and the W-3 will be filed. I plan to bring those to the meeting. Uh, I think, um, Cheryl, you might want it sooner because Paul gets on the taxes pretty quick. But otherwise, I would just bring the W-2s to the next okay. meeting. That'll be okay. fine. Okay. That's all I have. Any questions? Yeah. Does the, uh, does the gravel tax fall under on your categories here, general revenue or taxes? It falls in the tax bucket, and we have to ensure that we spend uh, at least that amount on our roads each year. Um, I'm trying to remember it. I want to say it's in the 17 to $20,000 a year range ballpark. I'd have to, I'd have to check though. Actually, I could probably check during the meeting and catch you after. Thank you. Yep. Any other, any other questions? I don't have any questions. Uh, we need a motion to accept the <clears throat> December 2021 financial statement. I'll make a motion to accept the 2021 financial statement, December. I'll, I'll approve, or I'll second the motion to approve the December statement. <clears throat> Motion's been approved and seconded to accept the uh, December 2021 financial statement. Any questions? All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Looks like we had two disbursements on a gravel tax this year for a total of 22,600. How, how much was it? 22,600. Oh, burn that up quick. <laughs> well, let's pay the bills. I'll make a motion we pay bills 1 through 18 for a total of $36,387.80. I'll second the motion for 1 through 19, 35868. <laughs> how, how do we have two different? What are we missing? What are you looking at there, Paul? I'm looking at. You got 19. I got 19. Yeah, these guys at home. 
Yeah. No, I got this was oh, sitting there. Right yeah. Did you bring yours at home, Dave? Yeah. I wonder if it's old one. That's probably what you got a new one. We just Carol, put in the new, new. We just put in the new supervisor fees and uh, board fees and Pira. So maybe that was missing at one point. Jake's got eighteen. You got nineteen. Eighteen bills. I got eighteen. Mine are higher gears. It should be. <laughs> it should be thirty-five. Because uh, fire alone is twenty-five. Uh, yeah. Police is. Well, let's do this one. Let's do that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, we'll change it. Change my motion of pay bills one through nineteen for a total of thirty-five thousand eight hundred sixty-eight dollars and six cents. I'll second that motion. <clears throat> That's correct. Motion's been made and seconded to accept the bills. Any questions on any of these? No. Nope. We'll just have to look later and see why we went from the number of bills to. <laughs> yeah. Hearing no questions, all in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. <clears throat> Reports of committees, meetings, and events. Planning Commission report, we all got that. I think he sent it out, he sent it out Monday, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty good, and we have, uh, We have the seeding renewal at new and new business. I think that was the only thing we had to act on. <coughs> next planning commission meeting is Monday, February seventh at six thirty p.m. The next town board meeting Wednesday, February nine at seven p.m. The Agrid Industries hearing variance hearing is Wednesday, January nineteenth at six thirty p.m. And just a reminder here, the annual town meeting will be Tuesday, March 8th at 7 p.m. Do you guys want to hold it in March again? Or would you like to... Do we want to just see what... Okay, okay. See what COVID does the next sure. month or two? Sure. Well, we don't have any choice, do we? By law, we have to have it? At well, least start can, it? You can move it. We have it to start it, but then... If you have a reason. Why don't we plan on starting it and having it? If yeah. something comes up where we need to carry it over, then we'll uh, extend the meeting. How's that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we did last, yeah. last year. Yeah. yeah. And we got to set the date for the board of audit meeting. When do we usually have that, Cheryl? We usually have it around oh, sec, second weekish of, of February, second or third week of February. So, I'm open. I'll have everything ready. Can we sneak I already in? balanced our books. We're in good shape. So, Can we sneak it in before the next meeting. Just show up earlier. Or? Yep, well, like the first or second. That. Yeah. Just come in early. So before the night. Oh, right. Mm, it takes long. Oh, okay. Because right. we go through the budget line by line. Do you want to have it before our February board meeting or after? Or don't it matter. The same day. That's what well, I was saying no. It's two oh. hours. It's it's going to take us yeah. uh, at least an hour and a half. Yeah. Wednesday before yeah. maybe. I was just trying to understand. No, what I meant before was second week. Was yeah, prior. yeah. Prior to uh, let's do the. Let's I think do we the should because of the police contract discussion and the roads. So yeah, maybe the. How are you guys looking on the first or second? Second. Now you make me get off the calendar. Wednesdays are better for me. Second works for me. Same here. Okay, same here. That worked for you, Cheryl. What time? Works. What time? Six thirty. Sure. Do we have to post that, Cheryl? I'm sure we do. <clears throat> okay, on unfinished business. Police contract for 2023. Want me to talk about that a little? Huh? Want me to talk about that a little? Yeah, yeah, you can talk about <clears> it. <throat> okay, we are 
thinking of going with the Sheriff's Department instead of St. Paul Park. Uh, but we have to make that decision. We figured in February, right, Cheryl? Because uh, by the end of March, I think. Okay, by th we just don't want to run late because other years we talked about it and we call the sheriff and he says, "Well, I need more notice, you know, I, for I got to do my budgeting this and that." So what I'd like to do is, <coughs> as a board, make that decision in our February meeting, so we don't run late. Uh, <clears throat> we've asked for feedback from the residents. The feedback I've seen so far is about 80% of the people are in favor of going with the sheriff, 20% against. We've got 19 people for going with the sheriff's office, two people opposed, and one that's indifferent. Okay. So I don't want to make that decision tonight. I'd sooner wait another month to get more input from people. Yep. So that's where that's at. Oh, and for cost, they... What they charge about ninety thousand a year for police. Well, close to a hundred. We just did it, Bill here tonight for what twenty five thousand for a that includes fire. It's oh. more like uh, ninety ish. Yeah, a little, little below ninety. Yeah, in a ninety thousand dollar range. Any questions on that? No. Would that be a topic for the annual meeting? No, because we want to get it done prior to that. Every other year that it gets kicked to the annual meeting or somewhere, then we call the sheriff and he says, you're too late for next year. So then we're stuck yeah, with Yeah, because they got to turn their budget in. What is some of the differences between going with one person and the other? Well, it's free. 90 grand a year we'd be able to save versus... And put that in the roads fund. We, we, we're not sure exactly if we'd be getting as many drives around the island or, you know, there might be some little things, but, <clears throat> yeah. Essentially, well, it'd be to... Roads. Yeah, and the, the same service? well, the county is planning same, on same dollars. county is planning on if we do this, they're gonna they're planning on hiring more officers. Hmm. What? That's they're planning on hiring more staff. I haven't heard that yet. Well, that's not my question. My question is, are we going to get the same coverage for less money, or we're going to have lower coverage for less? Money? You know what, we really can't answer that. When we asked the sheriff about that, you're trying to get one police department to, what do you want to say, badmouth another one or say, I'm going to do better or than them and they're worse than me. And we all know that'll never happen. They're not going to say that. Uh, um, we, we have a contract with St. Paul Park that requires a certain number of, of uh, runs through the township daily and stuff. Yeah. They don't guarantee us anything. That's where we want to have a nice open discussion with the community on are we interested in raising everybody's taxes to cover the road costs or are we interested in trying to, you know, try something different for even if it was a year, that'd be a hundred thousand or ninety thousand that would go a long ways towards roads or the 400 residents raising raising the kind of revenue we're thinking we need. So it's that's why we want to hear from everybody. We will get drive-throughs. They just can't define it right now. Uh, for one thing, because we haven't committed, and for another thing, he did ask for more money in the budget to hire more staff. And at the moment, he could tell us that it would be whatever officers are patrolling south of 94 would include us he's um he's actually trying to get extra officers so he could split up in three zones instead of two instead of north of 94 and south of 94 he wants to have three um but i i don't know anything about whether his budget request has been approved or not so and we we've contacted well cheryl has anyway several other townships and that's what their arrangement is they have the sheriff's department police yep i agree yep. well i wouldn't say south denmark township is or north may township up by withrow and that there and the sheriff's people all don't come out of washington county 
I drive around my little school bus and I see sheriff's cars parked in lots of driveways all over Cottage Grove, Woodbury, you know. So, I mean, they're like the highway patrol. They take the cars home so they don't necessarily go to Washington County and leave from there every morning. You mean still water? Still water, yeah. And I, and I, am I correct when I heard that uh, we are the only township that's contracting with the municipality and not using the sheriff's service for our policing in, in Minnesota? Is that in, right? No, in Washington County. In Washington County. Yeah. So they would approve a one-year deal, like a trial year deal, or would we have to commit to more than one year? Oh, I so think we, we're committing. If we commit, it's a done deal. Right, that's what I'm saying. And that's well, why I want to hear from all the residents their thoughts. Well, by, by law, they have to provide us police protection at no cost. That's a state law. Are you going to send out a questionnaire? Yeah, I mean, it's, the first I heard. it was sent out. I never got one. Email one. Email one. Is this the first I heard? We, we've been talking about this since the last annual meeting. It's, but yeah. It but was. Uh, oh, nope, that's fine. Yeah. No, 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 I get that, Dick. Um, Dick, maybe it has your old email address, you know. Oh, oh. it might be. Yeah. yeah. Make sure Cheryl's got your current email address. I got it. Oh, you got she it. Does. Okay. Yeah. Then she sent it out because she sent it out to people in an email. Right, but the group list might have Dick Adams at Gray Cloud rather oh, than his person. Okay. So I don't know if we, is that correct? I mean, at any time we could add St. Paul Park back on. I don't see why. Well, I, they're going to make that, if the we might have double coverage. county sheriff is going to make that commitment to but hire it doesn't, people. Right. I guess I, I, you know. I don't see why we couldn't add more. The county could still cover us and you'd have double coverage then. I, I don't see well, why there'd and, ever be and a And they're going to have arrangements with Cottage Grove and St. Paul Park to pick it up if it's an emergency. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think back when <clears throat> Greg Cloud had their own police officer, they had their own person, and when they eliminated him, people thought the end of the world was going to come, you know, and it didn't. Nothing changed, you know, so I mean, but no, like I say, give us input back. It's just, you know, the, the bottom of the line is there's only been so many dollars to go around, you know, so I mean, that 90000 90, a year we can use for other expenses, it's either that or you know, raise taxes to cover the cost. You know, I don't want to get into a position where if we do a road repair and we don't have enough money to pay for it, because that's happened. Well, and I, I don't want to take anything away from, I mean, figuratively anyway, away from St. Paul Park because the police chief has been outstanding for us. I mean, you know, with, with some issues and those kinds of things. So I don't want to uh, discredit St. Paul Park. No, it's got nothing to do with quality of service or anything like that. It's strictly financial is what it is. Is it going to affect our, our relationships for fire? And, uh, no, fire's, with Paul Park? fire is still going to be St. Paul Park and Ambulance will be cut or school. We're not changing that. Any call that came in, you'd assume St. Paul Park's probably going to be the first one there anyway. I don't, I mean, <coughs> but we can't guarantee that. But yeah, we all pay taxes. Their their job as the county is to provide all the county citizens with ad adequate police protection. So we have no complaints from any other township, and we're the only one not using it. So pretty good. Reviews from the other townships, I guess, is what we have. Well, that and that was really important to hear. Yep. You know, and I don't think they're gonna tell us the wrong thing. Can we? Should we move on? Yep. Road repair budget. Uh, seal coating. She's got on there. No road repair budget. You, you got the right one again? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I had notes on this one, that's why. Road repair budget. Um, 
Who wants to talk about that? Me? Dan? Well, I can. I mean, so we don't have. So me and Scott got together last week and or a couple <coughs> weeks ago, and we came up with kind of a. We used the county uh, thing that's posted up here with the budget, and we kind of came up with a ten-year plan, trying to itemize out road by road, and, and coming up with a um, a plan to to help us understand where things are going and how much money we need to be saving extra and that's kind of where that police budget came in um so we don't have complete final numbers yet but we're getting really close and with the police stuff i mean we have uh 99th 105th pioneer you know for sure that are probably all going to have to happen within the next you know eight to ten years and that, that's where we're staring at, you know, the, the costs that the county provided. And then we've, um, I've been meeting with another uh, contractor, I guess, to get other budgets. So that, that's where we're at with the road thing is a game plan of what's getting seal coated, crack sealed, that kind of stuff. And then low, medium, high costs. Um, so I think we got a really good start to um, dial in some budgets and then see where our budget kind of falls. From there to how much money we need to add extra to me yeah. take a look at what i sent out to you guys there's a there's a planning model where you just drop down what type of repair for each road whether it's seal coat whether when it's middle you send overlay, it out? just this afternoon oh. okay. um, so you just got it in your inboxes but it, i mean if you look at the county plan if we didn't raise the levy a dime we wouldn't be underwater until 2042 a more realistic plan is uh Dan and I put a straw man together for the next 10 years. We probably need to add several thousand dollars a year into the roads. Not necessarily 90, but we need to, we need to take action to make sure we can cover the roads. But uh, next time we meet, maybe even we can take a portion of the budget meeting just to look at how it works. Sure. But it's really easy to use. Just drop down, repair type, what year has an expense, and then it sums up the uh all the road maintenance for that year and then uh, we can look at a budget over the next 20 years for it okay it's, it's real real slick you know along with scott's road thing part of what's going to affect our road thing too is you know what happens at the annual meeting you know what do the what will the residents vote in for a budget what are we going to do at the sheriff you know at the sheriff thing are we going to Keep St. Paul Park? Are we not going to keep St. Paul Park? Uh, another looming thing out there is our town hall. If we're going to build another one, if we're not going to build another one, you know. So there's kind of three major things there. So you know, they all affect one another. I think that's kind of why we were looking for input on the police ahead of time because that redirects our budget one way or another on what we kind of recommend um, yeah. for cost-wise, I guess. Yeah, that's why two no, I reasons. Don't I don't think we can do that yet. Yeah. Right. Not by February 2nd. No, but we'll probably have to have a couple separate, yeah. you know, if we well, want to, something like that. We could do that because then, then we could bring that up at the annual meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Next item is short-term rentals, CUP applications and ordinance. Well, at this point in time, we have a draft ordinance put together. It's not ready to put in use. I've got a couple items I want to change on it. But at this time, I think we'll, would, we would be best to um, either disapprove or cancel the CUPs because they won't be in that kind of form anymore. It'll be in a um, it'll be a licensed form out of the draft ordinance which is is not done yet. Um, but we got to honor the 90 day requirement to take action. So the action has to be uh, cancel, cancel those 60 three. 60 days. Well, we ended up 90 days. Oh. Because we. We ended up 120. Oh, 120? Okay. Yeah. 
Oh, sorry about that, you guys. But uh, so, anyways, at this point in time, we gotta we gotta uh, deny deny those three CUPs. So I'll make a motion. We deny the three CU pending CUPs. I'll second that. Related to short-term rentals. Yeah. yeah. Motion has been made and seconded to. What was the word used? Deny the three. Deny the, the three short-term rental yeah. condition yeah. use permit applications. Pending, pending applications. Right. So what? I guess we got to vote on it and get that done. Yeah. Well, he's got a he's question. Second. So w what's our action you want with this? Do you want because we will we will um, approve the ordinance well eventually but do you want like each of us to go through and get rid of what we don't like modify this well, and then try I, I to come together we need to re we... read it very carefully yeah um, well let's, right. we got to finish the denial first of the okay. three yeah yep. hold on it and okay so motion to made and second in to uh deny the cp app okay Applications for short-term rentals. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Now I thought our attorney would be here tonight, but he's not. But well, I, I'm not ready to do anything with that ordinance yet. I got some things I want. Yeah. To so how do you want to work on that? When when do we want to do it? Do we want to have a special meeting? Do it at a meeting or? Well, the sooner the better because these people need to know what. Yeah. What they got to look forward to. You know? So do you want us all like? Do you want us to individualize like what we want and then share it with each other? Or how how do we get this to come together? How can we be working uh, on this? Well, I think we should have a work group. What if we did this? What if we extended this meeting to some night solely just to talk about our three ideas? I mean, it'd be a public meeting open to the public, but we, we need a time to work on our ideas and then get it back to the attorney. Yeah. Does that sound I, like a logical thing? I don't think logical we thing? do that in a month. Oh, well, we could pick a date for us three that are available to talk about it. <clears throat> we could do that with the February meeting too. At our February board meeting? Well, I don't know if we we, we, we probably might wouldn't have, have enough it time. done by then. Yeah. Well, we don't have to have it done. I think we should just. So let's not extend this meeting. We'll figure that out in February. Okay, okay. we can do that. Yeah. But it'd be nice to get our ideas, like Dan was saying. Yeah. You got ideas. I got ideas. Can we yep. share and them to each can, other? No, we can send them to, to Cheryl. Cheryl. Okay. And then she can compile. The, I, sorry, Cheryl. Compile those and send that to. The, That's probably not even worth. Little. I think we're going to have to just have an open thing because if we just send it to Cheryl and she tries to, I think we're just going to have to have it during a meeting that we can all hash out whatever. Yeah, I agree with you. So everyone work on it, figure it out, and then we work have on it, next it out. month we have, because March yeah. or April will be here before <clears throat> we know it. <laughs> so. yeah. Well, when do we want to bring our ideas back to each other then? At a regular board meeting or? Well, I think uh, uh, come up with your ideas and send them to Cheryl, and then she can share them with everybody. You know? <laughs> that's kind of, <laughs> yeah, that's kind of skirting no, the open meeting no, line away. No, it isn't. Well. It isn't. All depends who's looking at it. <laughs> right. I mean, what's the difference if I talk to you and he, he or well, I talk to Cheryl and she talks to you? We, it's kind of. We, uh, we, can't, we can't do that. But we can individually send the request to Cheryl and she can compile them and then we could have a meeting. I can compile them for next month's meeting. Sure. We're together for that board of audit meeting. Is that something we can be discussing at that time? No, that's no. only audit no. stuff. Yeah. Yeah, no other, you can't do any other town business during 
a meeting that's... I just get nervous if we push this to February and then we're just really going to start running out of time pretty quick before spring. Well, but... I don't think it's going to take long to okay. modify this draft form. From... We have to get it accepted as an ordinance then too, though, or something, if whatever we yeah. do, right? And yeah, and then okay. the March Town Board meeting. Dan, are you... Are... Do you have certain points you want to discuss tonight? Um, I mean, there's definitely, I, I'm not a fan. This is way too much and it really doesn't even apply to our situation of what our problem is. So we don't like short-term rentals haven't really even been an issue. We've strictly had noise issues. So I guess for me, there's a lot of stuff going on in here and I, this, this would shut down everything Ted's trying to do. Um, I definitely have things that I'd like to apply to bring to protect neighbors and stuff, but this is just a lot of stuff to adopt in a situation that we, in my opinion, we haven't really had, we didn't even know we had short-term rentals in some of the cases, and I, this is a lot for something that could just be uh, licensing and, um, you know, I, I yeah, I, I think I need to go through and, you know, really tickle on things, but there's a lot of stuff in here that's just no, 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 shall not this, shall not that. And I, it, it really doesn't even fit our situation, in, in my, my opinion, of what we're trying to accomplish for allowing events. I mean, that's completely separate than this. I, I agree with Dan. I, I, I really like to see the three of us sit down together, public meeting, open meeting. It's the sole purpose is to discuss what we like, don't like, the uh, public will be there, they can give their input, but there'd still be a public hearing for when there's an ordinance drafted. You know, this is just be for us to get our act together to give back to our attorney. Yep. Uh, we could do that on the 19th, that's we have Agri Industries variance hearing. And even if that took an hour, then work on this after that. What do you think of that? It's not burning up another night. We're going to be here anyway. And like I say, the sole purpose of that meeting would be to just to discuss what we want in an ordinance. To give, because we haven't given anything back to our attorney yet, input or nothing. I, I wouldn't have time to post and publish. Oh, well, you wouldn't have to post it. We'll just continue this on to that night for that purpose. Okay. I think she does need to publish it. No, we're just continuing a meeting on. We wouldn't close this meeting tonight. Meeting stay open until the 19th at, uh, say, 7 o'clock. We got variants hearing for Egg Industries at What do you think of that, Dan? Yeah, that's fine me. Well, we got to work fast. Because, like Dan said, we you know, if we wait until February, we do this, we do that, and then we're going to draft an ordinance, and then you got to have a public hearing for the ordinance, and you know, it'll drag out another two, three months. What difference does it make if it drags out? I guess my only concern is uh, coming into spring. So if we get into spring and I, you know, I, I guess we just have to basically use Ted's property because that's the noise is the, the big issue. So I guess I feel like for the sake of neighboring properties and different things that it would be nice to have things before season starts up okay. that Understood. we're in agreement with, I guess, you know. And we got three pending applications that we should act on, not drag it out forever in a day. You interested in doing that, Paul, on the 19th? Yeah, I, c I can do that. Okay. So why don't you make a motion now to... Uh, well, we'll do it at the end of the meeting because we won't close the meeting, but we'll plan a meeting on the 19th at... We could write down 7 o'clock because Egg Industries meetings at 6.30. Okay. Go ahead. I would suggest that you maybe have your attorney here to discuss yep. this because this ordinance language and a lot of that that you got to have in there uh, to support 
can back you up on what you're trying to do. So yep. the attorney can tell you what's necessary and what isn't, you know, to keep it. Yeah, we would we would or, we would ask him to be here too. We would ask him to be here. Well, basically, Gordy, what we're trying to do is, us three haven't talked about this. I know. And I'd like to get us all on the same page. But I'm trying to have an attorney here so you guys don't go off on a tangent that you got to back up on. Well, he, he gave us draft language. Yeah, I know he did. Okay. We're not going to discount him. Okay. Well, that takes care of that for now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Move on to ARPA funds. Did you want to talk about it a little bit, Cheryl? Sure. Like what we received and what we have coming? Sure. Um, last week, I believe it was Friday, the state came out with final rules for um, dispersing and using ARPA funds, the American Recovery program and we have received half of our funds already we've received I think like sixteen seventeen thousand uh, dollars we'll receive the other half this year so we're scheduled to receive around thirty two thousand dollars in ARPA funds total total okay um, up until this point um, infrastructure had been an item that you could spend the funds on last Friday with the final rules that was broadly expanded um, Paul and I both participated in a webinar that was put on by the Minnesota Association of Townships this morning and uh, you can now uh, put that money into your general fund you can use it for roads. You could use it to build a new town hall. You don't have to use it just for, you know, we were thinking infrastructure, and what they meant by that was the data infrastructure or internet infrastructure, and we were thinking of using it on Geneva because there are six homes there um, that don't have Comcast. Um, but we would not have to spend it on that. We could spend it on pretty much anything now. So that's why I brought it up. Perhaps you'd want to discuss, I thought the town board would want to discuss what they might want to spend it on. Well, it's, it's only 15,000. That's what's left. There's another chunk coming. No, we spent. We haven't spent any. No. We have received the first half. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. And we originally we thought our only use could be like broadband or something like that, so that's why we solely were looking at adding helping out the six residents on uh, Geneva yeah and then but and it has up. to be titled lost revenue that's what it has to be titled mm -hmm. well, for the road part for anything there's a lot of things you can use it for I had no idea pretty much anything there was 360 people <coughs> in that zoom meeting And Scott, something that you might find interesting is they said um, it could just go into the general fund. And even if you use it on road and bridge, you don't have to transfer from the general fund to road and bridge in order to spend it. Okay, that's good. I thought, I, thought we, I thought we had send some of that back. Was that a different That was grant? different. That was a different grant. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was the CARES Act, I think. Ah, you're right. Okay, thank you. So what road projects could we use it on? Anything we wanted? Or anything, anything you wanted. Anything you want. Yeah, we'll probably end up just shoving that right in the... We don't have no problem there. <laughs> because, Dan, you had mentioned there was some other option for Geneva. Starlink? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not familiar That's with that. That's a satellite. Then. Yeah, that's the new thing now. Okay. So it's wireless. It's not, I mean, hard lines obviously probably your best, but it's, yeah, that's supposed to come out this year. Oh, okay. It's all just shot in by satellite, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're going to have to cut some trees down. 
you haven't been over in a while. There might be a few. <laughs> Staying warm this winter. <laughs> when do we have to do that by? Is there a timeline on that? I got really confused about that. December 30, um, spend the money? Yeah. No. December 31st, 2024. That's when you got to oh. spend it. Bye. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's not, but we got to have, uh, we'll get the next payment either April 22nd or September 22nd. I, okay, I we'll have to keep that to money in mind. Cut your we, tails off. We'll, that. we'll have to keep that in mind when we do our road stuff, figure mm -hmm. out what we're going to do, mm -hmm. when and what. Okay. That's all I had on that. Any other unfinished business that we can think of? Or do we move on to new business? Okay, we're well, moving on to new business. Thank Elizabeth Bell and Cliff Rodall. This is... Dick's Dick? got this. Okay. What's that? Thank Elizabeth Bell and Cliff Rodall. Oh, for serving on the board. We didn't do that last month. I gave you a little sheet. <laughs> Which one do you have? I gave you a, no, I gave you a separate cheat oh. sheet that said how long they had served. Oh. I lost it. Okay. Well, it don't matter. We still want to thank them, no matter how much time they put on. And Patty. Patty was on the planning commission for a period of time, too. Yeah, okay. we already got her. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't want to mess again with these two. Okay. Oh, here it is. Here's the cheat sheet. <laughs> right in front of me. Okay. Elizabeth uh, is deputy clerk from 2010 to 2012, clerk from 2013 to 18, and clerk from 19 through 21. Cliff was in the planning commission from 2002 till 2021 and served as commission chair since 2006. Okay, Elizabeth, help, or uh, Elizabeth. Cheryl, help me with this on B, approved tentative date for LBAE meeting. That's the property taxes. Oh, yeah, okay. And this is the date the county has given us tentatively. I just have to confirm it works for all three of you. Yeah, I think it's fine. And how many of us are, are just you two. listed? I, you and all three of us? No, you and Dick. Me and Dick. Okay. You, you have to be, you know, taking the course. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I think it lasts three years, and I took it no, last year or year before, all online. Okay, uh, condition use permit renewal for, this is Patrick Sieben, right, for his fireplace? Yes. Any, uh, we don't have any complaints? No the complaints. The planning commission was fine with it? Yes. Okay. The planning oh. commission recommended for you to approve. Yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, we need a motion on that? Oh, do we want to, that's, I'll make a motion that we renew it, that I want to talk about it before we vote on it. Sure. I'll second the motion. To renew motion it. made and seconded. Any questions? Okay, our attorney told us to quit issue in CUPs. Yeah, an issue. Well, we're not ready for that today. Okay, well, I just wanted to bring it up. Yeah. So you want to just keep doing what we've been doing I for another we year? Keep, well, whatever ones are going to come up for renewal. Until we get something else going? Until we get the interim or whatever it was called. Might get a new title on it. <laughs> Might get a new title. Yeah. Okay, that sounds good to me. Okay, motion's been made and seconded to approve the uh, saving condition use permit renewal. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Motion carries. Snowplow. So, um, Bulow bought a snowplow from um, Mankato. And he brought it up to test it. And he's very happy with it. And it's $12,000. Less than I thought he would 
be able to find a stone wall for. And so we will own that snow plow until he works off his debt. Works off his twelve grand. Okay. Yeah. Like we did the last time. Okay. And he's pretty happy he's got it. And we actually, we already approved that at another meeting. We told him we would we do that. We approved it, yes. Um, back in, the thing was 30 back, grand. Back in August you know? or yeah. September or something. We had, a, okay. we had a larger number than that. Okay. Yeah, I don't remember the number, but yeah. <coughs> okay. We don't. We don't. We're going to own that snowplow, did you say? We all have the title. And we will have the title. He will. We do right now. Oh, the last time we did that, we transferred the title immediately to him and just put a lien on it. Because if, if we're the owner, we got to insure it. Uh, there's something different about that. Well, we'd be liable. You know, transfer the title to him and put a lien on it. Oh, we could do that. That way, that way you're safer. Yeah, I know, safer. I know he sent it. I know he sent it to you. That makes more sense. I mean, anyway. the original title. We're essentially yeah. the bankers, the so we should have the land. I picked it up at the county, and two hours later, it was his. Right. I, I understand that. I understand that. <clears throat> so we'll rectify that as soon as we can. Yeah, that, there's too much liability involved with that truck. The township to take the risk. He's still using the old truck. Yeah. He isn't sure, right? Well, that's the whole problem. If we're the owner, we, we, we can be liable. Okay, we'll fix that tomorrow. <clears throat> Okay, the cemetery book. Wow. <laughs> ah, okay. We got a we got a book called Perry History. This is a, a twenty year project that was uh, done by, uh, I got a list of the authors here, actually it doesn't matter, they're all associated with Great Cloud Township in, in one way or another. The, uh, the book is, uh, th there's something, that <coughs> this, this, is, this is a passage from in the book. Writing the book brought challenges and many questions. Was this a history book or a family history? What dates and words to use? In compiling information about individuals, we found that in many cases, birth, baptism, census, military, death records, and even tombstones had conflicting dates. There are over 100 unmarked graves, many having been marked with wooden crosses that are lost to time. For some individuals, no records were found beyond cemetery notes. Mysteries were uncovered. Decisions were made about resolving discrepancies. And uh, and what? I'll get it. Stuck together. And explanations were given in the narrative to support them. The, uh, the book is a comp, it's, it's part genealogy, it's part history. It starts in the early 1800s and ends in 1940s, early 1940s is the time frame in this book. And it talks at length about all the early settlers, the fur traders, 
the inhabitants of the island, what the original pictures and maps and everything look like. It's pretty pretty fascinating, frankly. And uh, it's it's a nonprofit book. And when the when the the uh, purchasing cost, <coughs> printing cost, excuse me, are satisfied, the proceeds will come to the township for, for the cemetery from the people that wrote this book. So I'd encourage you, if you're interested in township history, uh, at least as far as the cemetery goes, it's a pretty fascinating read, actually. It talks about all the original inhabitants and how they, how they intermarried and where they came from and whose kids were whose and you know it, it, it's it, it took the the the, uh, the four or five authors tw 20 years to, to, to uh, tabulate all the information in this book the book's twenty dollars if you uh, if you want one I, I have four tonight for sale here if you're interested otherwise uh, those of you watching on TV or, or whatever, you can contact me at, at my email. I'm, my name is Richard Adams, and my email is Richard C A, <coughs> Richard C A at Comcast.net. If you uh, and uh, contact me, and just if you contact me by email, just use book as a, as the uh, title on the email. So that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, does Dick, anybody have any questions? Yeah, Dick. Who are the authors? <coughs> who are the authors? Are they township? Oh, the authors. Okay. Uh, are they are they residents or no? Uh, well, one of them was my wife. Okay. <laughs> She's a genealogy person. Okay. Uh, Naomi. Yeah, I've got the list of all the authors right here. Alice Robinson. Most okay. everybody that lives here has heard of her. Uh, uh, Alice, Amy, excuse me, Amy uh, McVie was a Brunel, a McCoy, and Turpin descendant. These are the authors now. Uh, they began, she began researching with Alice Robinson, a distant cousin, in the late 1990s. Hmm. From the beginning, she knew a book had to be written. John C C Severson, a, a, uh, I'm going to fumble with this one, a uh, Bruce, Bruce Shear, I think it is, and McCoy descendant, and his wife Candy also met Alice Robinson, a distant cousin, <clears throat> in the late 1990s. They began helping with research and then became storytellers. Naomi Purvis Adams lived on Greycout Island for over 50 years. Her husband was, was her first husband was a Brunel and a Turpin descendant. She met Alice Robinson and eventually became record keeper for the and caretaker for the cemetery. Uh, Naomi uh, took care of the cemetery for uh, 10, 12 years uh, before Patty took over. And Alice Robinson, a Labath and Turpin descendant, was born on Greycott Island and inherited the cemetery records from her uncle, Edward Labath. That had been compiled in the 1940s. She had been accumulating information about the Greycott Cemetery family for years when she enlisted cousins to do further research and names and then write this book. Hmm. So those are the folks that, that uh, were involved in the uh, in the prep in the in the book period uh, for 20 years. And uh, so there it is. Thanks for bringing that, Dick. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Well, the nice thing about this is the once the once the printing costs are covered, the township will receive the funds for can I go on the website for use with the cemetery. It is on the oh, website okay. under news. Okay. Thanks, Dave. What was that? Will the person who's in charge of the cemetery have a copy of that for their use? Does does the person? Yes. Yeah. The current one. Yeah. The current yeah. One. Patty Vestal. 
Okay. Yeah, she has she she has three of them this winter. <laughs> so she probably needs it. <laughs> anyway, okay. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. Well, I have one more thing for other. Typically, uh, when a resident passes away, we hear about it before the next meeting and uh, say a little something. So the, these two passed away shortly before our December meeting, so we didn't, we didn't even know it. So uh, Randy Miller, he passed away on the uh, 7th. Uh, he grew up on 99th Street, and his twin brother lives just on the block a little bit. And his mom's still living in the original house. <clears throat> and Marilyn Hastings passed away on the on the 4th of December. We didn't get, um, I, I don't think the obituary was published until well after our December meeting. And um, she was 94, and she lived her at least half her life in that house down the, down the road with the pumpkin patches. And uh, of course she leaves several of her kids. Uh, see, I went to high school with Sandy and then Billy of course lives on the lot next to it. So uh, their families are in her wishes. So thank you. That's all I had. <clears throat> I got one other thing. It, it, you know, it seems early to be thinking about this, but the town hall here, our lease is up in 2024. That's when Ag Industries can put the boots to us, which sounds like a long way away, you know, two years. But at the speed township government works, two years goes by pretty quick. And I'm thinking if we decide to build a new town hall, it should be built and done by the fall of 2023 versus trying to build one in the winter between 23 and 24. So what I'm looking at is if we want to build one in 2023, that gives us all this summer to decide if we're going to build one or if we're going to move somewhere else or rent somewhere or what we intend to do and all year long the figure out what we're gonna do, if uh, we're gonna hire an architect to draw pictures of it or what we do. One thing that <clears throat> people didn't realize when they sold it is, if we build anything over $175,000, it has to be bid out. That's according to the Minnesota Association of Unless Townships. the residents build it. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, that ain't very likely to happen. <laughs> My knee should be fine by something. <laughs> Can point a good finger, right? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I got your finger. So anyway, it's something to start thinking about. Uh, uh, yeah. Cheryl, I sent her a thing she's going to send to the other townships to see what they do. You know, do they have a building? Do they not? Do they rent? Uh, where do they store their documents? Where's the clerk work out of? Well, that's, uh, that's a Bay Town. Did. They had the residence build it. Did they? Yeah. But. And they had some contractors in town too. Yeah. yeah. The town hall committee's probably already put a lot of research into that. Well let us know what you got. Who's on the committee? Yeah, they he's already done a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have we we have all the all the costs figured out and everything. Well if I remember right the costs were estimated, nothing really in writing. I think they were pretty good. Uh, well, yeah. that's all we said they were intended to be. But yeah. they, were, they were done with the contract to people. But we were a long way from pounding nails. I mean, you got surveying to do, you got septic to do, you got well to do, uh, and that $175,000 amount, that can't be split up into eight different little parts to circumvent it. If it's $200,000, you can't, well, we'll split it off five ways at 40 grand each. It says in there the state don't look favorably upon that. So what that kind of leads you to doing is either get Paul to get his knees better and build it or you hire a contractor to build it. And if you're going to have a contractor build it, you're going to have to have an architect design it so it can be designed, built, and bid. 
We so, get a nice shed for 175 now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unless you build something really dirt dog cheap. So anyway, just keep that in mind for this summer. We got to make that decision here. We own a chunk of property right on the corner of Pioneer Road and Island Drive down here. Three acres. Yeah. Do we own land in front of the cemetery? Yeah, and yeah, we own I land. I think it'd be kind of cool to have it there somehow, but I don't know how ever that. Then you could tie it in with your <coughs> services and all that stuff with the well, cemetery. This was, but this was already perked. It's got some okay. markers yeah. in it that just have the that feel. Yeah. Yep. The only problem is they're going to make you perk it again because in order to Gordy could probably speak of that. You just did it. In order to do it, you got to have a what do you call it? Registered septic system design engineer design and engineer it. Somebody has to design the septic system. Yeah, and they'll probably require up to date one. Up to date one. Yeah. It's already perfect. <coughs> yeah, it's that soil is good. Well, okay, but anyway, whatever. Keep in mind that decision's got to be made. Yeah, we, this year, we've got bids. Uh, we've got bids from all those people, uh, you know, that two, three years ago. You know, and they were all the regular, the right people. Any we, thought to building something that would maybe, you know, be used more than one day a month that we could actually generate some income from? It would have. It would have to have indoor handicap bathrooms. It would have to be heated. It would have to have obviously a septic system or well. And it should be, in, and I hate to say this, but it should be built as a storm shelter. So it could be used that way. If we got bids two years ago, those numbers are, you're Shut. getting half the building right now, so. Yeah. For what you could have. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. That trying to build something to rent out? Give you an idea. Our union hall, they built a real nice building, and their thoughts were, well, maybe we can rent it out. It didn't pay. The damage you get, and uh, even our own members, we thought to take care of it. No. Well, you need five people to clean it up? Yeah, so after a period of about two years, they just plain quit renting it out. I mean, take a look at any rental hall around town. They're usually pretty ratty inside, unless you get one hell of a lot of well, money or it's would, a regular full-time establishment open for residents to use yeah like this is yeah but i've heard other people say well let's build something nice we rent it out and make money you ain't gonna make no money out of it well, lucky to break even it's not, it's not a money maker no but anyway that's all i had to say like, keep it keep in mind okay. that decision should be made this year oh all right anything else well, we don't adjourn. adjourn. No, we're going to yep. carry this meeting yep. over. Oh. Are we... So we will not close this meeting. Yeah. Uh, we will keep it open until January May 19th, or January 19th at 7 p.m.